Energy is a vital part of modern society. We use energy to store and prepare food as well as to heat and cool our homes. Our education, our economy and our health systems are fully reliable on energy as well as our transportation system and all of our industry. Most of our entertainment is directly or indirectly connected to energy use. Everything from cinemas and concerts to smaller activities such as playing video games or simply watching TV. Even our most used devices, our smartphones, where we listen to music, talk to our loved ones, surf the internet, take pictures, to name only a few, are energy dependent. With the development of technology and electrification, the demand for electricity in our society will only grow, with many more analog items being transformed into digital alternatives. With the rise of global warming challenges, it has never been more important to responsibly generate energy use energy and store energy. One of the key social innovations in the clean energy transition are energy communities. But before we go into that, let us first introduce ourselves. Hi, we're the newcomers of Horizon 2020 project. Our project started in 2019 and it's ending after three years in 2022. We're eight partners from six European countries. Germany, Italy, the Netherlands, Slovenia, Sweden, and the United Kingdom. Our key topic of research are energy communities. To understand our research and our results, it's important first to define what we think energy communities are. We study new clean energy communities, which we define as associations of actors engaged in the energy system transformation through collective, participatory and engaging processes that seek collective outcomes. With this rather broad definition of new clean energy communities, we include the whole spectrum ranging from local citizen-led initiatives to virtual communities or municipal or commercially driven initiatives. This means we're dealing with a very rich and complex uh, and very interesting research subject. Before we move into our research and findings, let's start with a question. Why energy communities? To answer this, we have to look at some facts. Man-made GAG emissions are primarily a byproduct of burning of fuels in power plants, cars or homes, which is all byproducts of either energy production or use. In fact, Energy industry is responsible for almost 30% of all CO2 emissions in 2019, not including the CO2 emissions in transport and the industry sector. The main source of these emissions in the energy sectors are fossil fuels, which remain a big part of our energy production and use. To decrease the carbon imprint of energy, we have to stray away from fossil fuels and increase energy production from renewable sources. Only then can we reach the climate change goals set both globally and on the EU level. The EU vision for 2030, which is only 8 years away, is the following. To achieve at least 55% cut in greenhouse gas emissions, to have at least 32% share of renewable energy, and at least 32.5% improvement in energy efficiency. The ultimate goal of the EU is to be climate neutral by 2050, which means that by the middle of the century, the amount of GHG emissions emitted in the European Union must not exceed the amount of GHGs that can be absorbed by natural or technical processes. To achieve these goals, a fundamental transformation of the way we generate, distribute and consume energy is needed. Energy communities will make an important contribution to this energy system transformation at the local level, but also beyond. There are New clean energy communities provide much needed social innovation. They combine the benefits of community energy, such as participation and democratic decision-making processes, with the benefits of self-sustained revenue-generating business models. The aim of our project is to conceptually distinguish between diverse forms of energy communities, to analyze their business models and their expected value creation, 
to assess their benefits for members, system operators and society, to offer relevant and credible energy-related information and knowledge to EU citizens for making informed, fact-based energy decisions, and to give practical recommendations to policymakers at all levels how to create a favorable environment for nuclear energy communities. All our research was done on 10 energy communities from six partner countries. Now that we've established what energy communities are and what role they play in the energy transition, we can move on to exploring the findings of our project. All our results are briefly described in our deliverable 7.1 and in a lot more detail in our other deliverables. All links are available on our website and in the description box below. But let's get back to the overview. We're going to look through 10 main topic areas starting with the definition of energy communities. At the EU level, there are two official definitions for energy communities, which have been established in the context of the EU Clean Energy for All Europeans package. This package defines two types of communities, citizen energy communities and renewable energy communities. A citizen energy community is defined in the provisionally agreed recast electricity directive as a legal entity that is based on voluntary and open participation and is controlled by members or shareholders that are natural persons, local authorities including municipalities or small enterprises. Their primary purpose is not financial but to provide environmental, economic or social community benefits to its members or shareholders or to the local areas where they operate. A renewable energy community is understood in the Recast Renewables Directive as a legal entity which in accordance with the applicable national law and similar to citizen energy community is based on open and voluntary participation, is autonomous and is controlled by shareholders or members that are located in the proximity of the renewable energy project that are owned and developed by that legal entity. Now we've already established that the Newcomers Project defined energy community as associations of actors engaged in energy system transformation through collective participatory and engaging processes seeking collective outcomes. This definition is wider than the proposed in the EU Clean Energy Package as it explicitly recognizes the array of actors involved in contemporary activity, including for-profit enterprises. We've tried to incorporate this in our research as well. A common focus uniting new clean energy communities is finding ways to consume locally generated power. But based on the actors involved, technologies employed or business models, we can recognize many different types of energy communities. Therefore, a sufficiently broad definition of energy communities is required in national policies to capture contemporary activity and support further experimentation in energy communities. The next topic we'll dive into are new energy community business models. To survive and flourish within transforming energy systems, energy communities have to develop new, often highly innovative business models. The viability of these business models is strongly influenced by the national energy markets in which these communities operate. For instance, national policies around the deployment of renewable generation technologies have provided a vital catalyst to the development of energy communities' business models to national policy frameworks. Despite all the differences and the diversity of energy communities, their business models, their operations, clean energy communities usually share one motivation amongst others, contributing in some form to the success of energy transition. But they do not only contribute to the energy transition, they also reorder relationships within energy systems and contribute to the development of multiple value propositions to different system actors. Nevertheless, only small number of energy communities are currently engaging with the active management of electricity networks or seeking to engage with emerging flexibility markets. One of our case study communities, Energy Local from the UK, is a great example of a new energy community business model. 
Now let's look at actors, networks and the role of skills and learning. Clean energy communities often depend on volunteering citizens. This means they often lack the full professional expertise needed to set up stable renewable energy projects. This makes them dependent on external parties with specific knowledge and skills. For new clean energy communities, this is especially relevant as they are pioneering innovative business models, technologies and citizen engagement practices. To address their needs, new clean energy communities are increasingly building up networks, partnerships and alliances with a broad variety of actors such as municipalities, companies and clean energy community networks and associations. Partnering with others opens up a wide array of possibilities of clean energy communities business models. But networking is not the only thing connecting energy communities. Learning processes are taking place within energy communities in various ways, as members are very active in sharing knowledge with other members. Consequently, clean energy communities may impersonate real knowledge banks from which information is shared among community members in different ways. Now let's take a look at technologies. Clean energy communities may use a variety of technologies for generation, storage and distribution of clean energy for a variety of reasons. Renewable energy generation is at the heart of most clean energy communities. The most widely used technologies are solar and wind power, but innovative technologies are increasingly explored. The choice of technologies is strongly dependent on infrastructure regulation as well as risk factors. And therefore, clean energy communities often choose well-established technologies to minimize the risk of the technology not working as planned. More sophisticated technologies tend to involve more third-party commercial actors. The benefits of clean energy communities are wide-ranging and extend beyond environmental and financial aspects. To understand what benefits clean energy communities bring to their members, we need to first understand why they join them. The four main categories of motives that the Newcomers Project defined are financial motives, motives related to self-sufficiency, environmental motives, and motives related to communal living. One of the key benefits of joining an energy community for their members is the empowerment. Empowerment transforms clean energy communities' members' roles. From passive energy consumers, they become active energy agents who have an opportunity to influence and shape the future of energy systems in their country through collective engagement. Another observed benefit in the newcomers' research is increased environmental consciousness of energy community members. Now let's look at the benefits for society. While it's quite easy to list benefits for energy community members, it's a bit harder to pinpoint the benefits they have to the larger society. Clean energy communities mobilize people to invest and take action. They increase the contribution of renewable energy to the system as a whole, displacing what would otherwise be contributed via fuel and thermal sources with their associated carbon emissions and local pollution impacts. They also promote learning and encouraging people to take action by spreading knowledge and practical know-how regionally or nationally. They promote the consumption of locally generated energy and also offer value to non-members by keeping money within a local economy that would otherwise be lost to it by implementing new energy tariffs and energy efficiency measures. And one of the most remarkable benefits, which is consistent with findings from our citizen survey of around 13,000 households, is that the vast majority consider clean energy communities as an important or even very important element in the transition to a more sustainable energy system. But what is important for their future development? The newcomers have identified some factor which foster energy community development. First is positive publicity, which raises awareness and promotes active engagement. Second is the commitment of the government, followed by the housing market structure. There is need for new housing legislation that would encourage investment in clean energy for renters and landlords. Better knowledge, dissemination and promotion of successful practices could also foster energy community development, as well as the promotion of a less consumption-oriented practices.
Energy communities can be scaled and their benefits diffused in many different ways. Elements of energy communities can diffuse via members sharing knowledge, experience, and information with others outside the community, formally or informally. Part of energy community business models may also be diffused and replicated in new communities. To improve the diffusion of energy communities, regulation, legislation, and policies have to support it. One of the key reasons why people don't join energy communities is that the majority doesn't know of their existence. Therefore, promotion of energy communities and improving their visibility is very much necessary. We've mentioned policies and regulations many times now. Energy communities exist within an already established economic, social and regulatory environment which shapes the way they develop and function. Policies and regulations play a crucial role in energy community development by either supporting their development or deterring it. It is important that the regulations in each country are adapted to national circumstances in order to enable the development of local versions of energy communities. But let's dive a bit deeper into policies and recommendations and what our project suggests the most crucial changes needed in the policy and regulation area are. To establish these recommendations, the Newcomers Project developed two documents. For the first one, we joined forces with three other Horizon 2020 projects, Comets, Social Rest and Sonnet, to produce a joint policy recommendation brief titled Putting People in the Heart of Energy Transitions, which was jointly presented at the final event with the same title in April of 2022. all agreed that the social innovation and energy initiatives are very well aligned with the social, economic, environmental and energy security goals of the European Union. And they offer a potential to support the, the energy union. However, we also see that the role of social innovation initiatives in current European legislation is still not very large. So we recommend that there should be a much stronger role in the Fit for 55 package that was mentioned by Rosalinda. Um, because this potential that lies in social innovation and energy can only be tapped if the policies, yeah, as Jan just said, pave the way for the people to follow this path. So we need tailor-made policies, also recognizing that we have such a great variety of social innovation in energy. Um, so each type of social innovation needs a particular um, policy approach so we need a well-designed policy, policy mix to really enable all different types of social innovation. And in the end, we believe that if we enable these social innovation and energy initiatives, we also unlock a new uh, source of capital, both social capital and economic cap capital, and that we in the end can also increase the acceptance of citizens um, of the energy transitions that have to go on in uh, in Europe, but also, of course, elsewhere. And that is yeah, ever more urgent, as we also said uh, several times already today. There are several policy recommendations in the brief. I just picked five, which I think are key. And we heard it several times already. We need to raise awareness of the potential of um, social innovation and energy initiatives, not only among the policymakers, but also among the citizens. So on both sides, there is limited awareness at the moment of this great potential. Um, we should also acknowledge the multiple benefits of social innovation and energy. So it's not only about uh, economic uh, benefits or technical innovation. It's also about these more social values that they create. So social inclusion, um, energy literacy, they address energy poverty, as we also heard. So we need to be aware of these multiple benefits. Um, and then, as we also said, harness the potential, which we can only do if we have um, yeah, improved legislation, improved policies, uh, where we reduce the barriers for people to get engaged and on the other hand also open possibilities to get engaged because some forms of social innovation currently are just not possible under the current legislation. Um, yeah, we need to design these policy frameworks in a way that they, yeah, that it is simple and easy to 
to follow for the citizen-led initiatives that they provide clear guidance for them. So there is also room for improvement there in terms of simplifying legislation. And last but not least, I want to highlight that we should also make an effort, and we do that partly already today, uh, to strengthen the European networks around social innovation in energy. Um, because we observed in our research that many social innovation in energy initiatives, they really um, yeah, could get a lot of support and information and knowledge from these umbrella organizations and networks. So we really think it's, it's key to um, yeah, promote those existing networks and also to create new ones. The policy brief and the joint final event had got an incredible reception and were both a huge success all four projects are proud of. Our keynote speaker, Rosalind van der Vlies, who is the director of the Clean Planet Directorate in DG Research and Innovation, shared some thoughts on the joint policy brief. I'm a firm believer if we are going to connect the dots join forces, build together on common knowledge base. This is the only way we can have a successful transition. The policy brief is shared in the description box below if you want to explore it into more detail. But for now, let's move on. So the second document the Newcomers Project provided is the final policy recommendations. These recommendations are focused solely on energy communities rather than social innovations in general. The recommendations were developed based on findings of the three-year-long researches that were part of the Newcomers Project. They are meant for policymakers on various levels, including the EU level, national level, but also on the local level. You can read all the recommendations in the document link below, but let us take you through the key points and recommendations we've come up with. Policymakers should provide exact and national adapted definitions to provide legal clarity and an appropriate basis for funding eligibility for energy communities. It is important that the member states develop national definitions of energy communities and not only copy the definitions in the Renewable Energy Directive and Internal Electricity Market Directive. Existing energy communities were established without these definitions in mind and the national definitions need to consider these already developed variants of energy communities. The second recommendation is to develop the concept of collective self-consumption. This will allow for multiple users to be considered as a single entity for settlement. It is important that this does not only include residents of same apartment blocks. Advancing collective self-consumption beyond single buildings to individuals on the same substation can extend access to benefits more widely and open up business model innovation. The third recommendation we want to share with you is preferential regulatory treatment of energy communities. Market rules were primarily designed for large players, which makes it difficult for small players such as energy communities to successfully enter the market. To facilitate the emergence, growth and replication of energy communities requires their active promotion via preferential regulatory treatment building on the approach taken in the Renewable Energy Directive. These suggestions all lead to recognition and strengthening of the status of energy communities. To support their development, energy communities can also benefit largely from incentives. Regulatory organs can energize community energy by creating routes to market. Energy communities struggle under dynamic policy and regulatory conditions. Long-term revenue certainty linked to the generation of renewable power under feed-in tariffs, for example, was a driver for the rapid growth of renewable energy communities in the past. In the absence of feed-in tariffs, alternative mechanisms are needed that reduce financial risks and make energy communities financially viable. Regulation should also incentivize distribution system operators to connect small operators to the grid, microgrids, and to facilitate B2B markets. Such incentives could create a pull effect for energy communities, which currently are often poorly incentivized to provide electricity system services, such as flexibility, for which they offer potential. Another recommendation is also to encourage collaboration and innovation between energy communities and licensed suppliers. Moving beyond the collective generation of renewable energy to trade, sell or self-consume energy typically involves new activities and responsibilities that require specialist expertise, knowledge and skills, which energy communities often don't have. 
partnering with licensed suppliers who have experience and capacity to take on these responsibilities lowers the risk of energy communities when developing these new activities. But while all these changes would great, energy communities often still need help and guidance, especially when starting up or expanding their activities. Therefore, we suggest setting up advisory services, umbrella organizations and other intermediaries. Citizens setting up and operating energy communities may need to draw on expert knowledge in the fields of project management and administration, finance, technology, legal affairs and communication. This is especially relevant in countries where energy community development is still in an early stage. And lastly, as hopefully you've gathered throughout this video, the energy system is complex and with energy transition is becoming even more diverse. The regulatory framework needs to give space for new alliances to emerge. The complexity of the energy systems will increase the need for energy communities to have support from professional expertise. To foster the development of energy communities, the regulations need to allow for new alliances between professional expertise and volunteer-based citizen-led energy communities to emerge. And with this, we've finished our short overview of the newcomers' recommendations. Now, hopefully you've enjoyed this short journey through our three years of research and work. If you want to explore further, make sure to visit our website and look through the links in the description box. Thank you for watching.